2011 started extremely well for INEOS, but by quarter four, on the back of uncertainty in Europe, demand had softened considerably. So what in fact were the results like for the full year? And how are things shaping up for 2012? To find out, Group Communications Manager Richard Longdon spoke to John Rees. It did turn into a game of two halves, um, which is what we thought we were seeing at the time. Um, so, we, as you know, we had a record first half of the year, two record quarters. Q3, which I think I probably had the numbers in November, um, was slowing down. And Q4 was quite a weak quarter across the group. Um, two main reasons for that were the uh, issues with the Eurozone in Europe, created a lot of uncertainty, of course, Greece, Spain, Italy, and the rest of it. And also China. Um, the Chinese government putting the brakes on a bit, uh, definitely suppressed demand for some of our products in the Far East and then we had the flow through back uh, into, uh, into Europe. So overall it was still a good year in recent context. Um, uh, Ineos Group EBITDA was over 1.7 billion euros, that's um, almost the same level as 2010 and, and certainly a good year, but as I say a year of two halves. Um, we weren't helped in the fourth quarter with a couple of uh, issues on the Cologne site where we had assets coming back from turnaround and, and the turnarounds took longer because of problems with the contractor. Um, but even without that, it, it was a slower quarter. I think the quarter as a whole was very similar to Q4 2010. Were there any surprises or shocks last year? Just that um, issue in Cologne really. Um, without going into a lot of detail, you know, we, we plan these site turnarounds quite a long time in advance uh, and we plan how long the assets are going to be down for and then that one took longer to come back but as I say mainly because of issues with the contractor. So looking at 2012 performance, have things changed so far? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, we saw quite a rapid pickup in January actually. We, you, you know, we track the four weekly moving average order book and for the first four weeks of January we were seeing a record volume intake which was very encouraging and it's it's carried on I mean it's it's um, particularly led from the US where they're benefiting from lower feedstock prices uh, and a very strongly recovering economy um, but we've also seen it in some of the chemical intermediates businesses um, businesses like phenol and uh, nitriles have, have picked up since the year end, so that's very encouraging. It's already been a busy year for the company with a successful refinancing at the end of February. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, what we're trying to do, m most of the debt in Ineos Group was put in place in 2005-06 when we bought uh, Innovene, obviously, from BP. And that was a, a series of loans with six, seven, eight, nine year maturity. So we're coming up to that time. Um, and we're looking at uh, refinancing that debt package uh, and at the same time trying to keep an eye on the credit markets because they're very seasonal uh, and because of what I said about the US economy, the credit markets in the US in particular have got off to a great start in 2012. So we went out uh, at the end of January and refinanced um, the earliest maturing tranche of debt which would have matured in 2013 and we raised about a um, billion dollars of uh, fixed rate bonds and 500 million euros of floating rate notes. Um, and it was very well received. Confidence in INEOS was high at the time. Was that what you expected? It was better, I think, than we expected. Um, we, we, you have to pick your timing. And we chose that window at the end of January. And off the back of a good US uh, set of economic numbers, uh, the credit markets were in good shape. And consequently, we had very strong demand. I think we had about $5 billion of demand and we decided to upsize the amount we were raising because the pricing was attractive. So um, it was very well received. Do you anticipate refinancing the rest of the borrowing, John? Yeah, that is the plan. Um, we're obviously focused on the cost of the debt as well and we're trying to make sure we do it um, 
in a way that reduces our interest cost over time. But the credit markets, you, you really have to take advantage of them while they're there. Um, and so far, um, they've con continued to be very good, mainly led from the US. So we are looking at a second stage uh, that we may well launch um, in the not too distant future. Why does INEOS have so much borrowing? We're a private company. You know, your choice of how you finance a company is either in the equity markets or in the debt markets. To finance INEOS in the equity markets would mean we'd have to do an IPO, um, which would mean that we would lose control of the company. Um, we would uh, then be faced with the typical kind of IPO cycle of, you know, next quarter needs to be better than the previous quarter because that's what equity analysts are looking for. And that's very difficult for a, a cyclical um, commodity chemical business where we are more focused very much on long term rather than quarter to quarter. Um, and we've always taken the view that if the debt markets are open and the prices are attractive, then it's a better way to run the business and it's a more efficient way to run the business. Mm -hmm. And um, we've had that model for 12 years and it seems to have worked reasonably well. Would this type of financing suit every business? I think um, for a business that is cyclical um, and a, a business that you know, can't guarantee what the next quarter is going to be like, uh, then it fits very well. I think other businesses where the objectives are different, perhaps you know, private equity back looking for an IPO exit, uh, then clearly the equity markets are attractive, but we don't have any plans to exit the NEO, so um, the, the model works quite well. Would anything change the way you finance the NEOs? Uh, that's not on the agenda at all, really. I think um, from a kind of involuntary side of the fence, you know, if the credit markets closed up completely and you couldn't raise um, and refinance the borrowings, then that would be something to think about. But uh, that's unlikely to happen. Uh, the debt markets are actually stronger than the equity markets for the time being. Um, so no, I think we'll just carry on as we are. Managing the finances of a company the size of INEOS is a massive job. Do you ever really get a chance to forget about it all and relax? I've just had a week off, actually. <laughs> but uh, I can't say I was entirely banker-free. But um, yeah, it's, um, well, you know INEOS, it's, it's kind of work hard, play hard. So uh, we try and uh, make the most of the windows that we have, usually in between refinancing projects. So uh, we can make it work.